Let's imagine for a second you're not feeling so hot. Okay. And you decide to head to the hospital. All right. So you arrive. You check in at the front desk. Mm-hmm. What's going on in the world of FHIR at that very moment? So right away, the system's going to create something called a patient resource. Okay. A patient resource. Yeah, you can think of it like a digital file okay. that has all your basic information in it. Like my name, my date of birth, that kind of thing. Exactly. Your name, contact details, mm -hmm. maybe even your insurance information. Got it. And at the same time, they're also going to create an encounter resource, okay. which is basically like a digital note that says, hey, this patient is here for a visit. Okay. It's going to log the time. The location, the reason why you're there. But, so it's kind of like the starting point. It's exactly the starting point of your digital journey through this hospital visit. I like that. All right. So now you've checked in. You're yeah. probably headed to triage. Right, where they take your vitals and everything. Exactly. A nurse is going to check your temperature, blood pressure, heart rate. Yeah, the usual suspects. And guess what? FHIR is capturing all of that. Really? So even those initial measurements are being recorded? Absolutely. And they're being recorded in a structured way. So oh. no matter where you go in the hospital, that information is available. Wow. So how does FHIR know who's taking those measurements, like who the nurse is? Another great question. FHIR uses something called a practitioner resource. Okay, a practitioner resource. And this can represent any healthcare professional involved in your care. Got it. So in this case, it would be the nurse. Okay. And it has information that identifies them. So, like, their name, their credentials. Exactly. That makes sense. And then all those vital signs you're talking about, those are recorded as observation resources. Observation resources. Uh, so, each measurement is an observation. Okay. And that way, anyone who needs to see your latest vitals can easily access them. So, it's all connected. It's all connected uh, thanks to FHIR. I'm starting to see how powerful this is. It's pretty neat. All right. So, we've been triaged. We've had our vitals taken. Mm -hmm. Now, we're finally face-to-face -face with the doctor. All right. The moment we've all been waiting for. What's happening on the FHIR side of things during that consultation? This is where the condition resource really comes into play. Okay. Condition resource. Tell me more. So this is how the doctor documents their diagnosis. So what they think is going on with me. Exactly. And it goes beyond just a name or a label. Okay. It can include details about the severity, any related observations, and might even link to relevant medical literature. Oh, wow. So it's really comprehensive. It aims to be as comprehensive as possible. And helps paint a clearer picture of what's going on. Precisely. It's not just saying, oh, you have a cold. It's providing a much more detailed understanding of your condition. Now, let's say during the visit, the doctor decides to order a scan. Okay. This is where we introduce the procedure resource. Procedure resource. So that's specifically about the scan. Exactly. It records details about the scan itself. Like what kind of scan? Exactly what type, when it was performed, who performed it, and so on. Okay, and then I'm guessing the results of that scan are also captured somewhere in FHIR. You got it. That's where the diagnostic report comes in. Diagnostic report, okay. This resource summarizes the scan results. Okay. And can link back to specific observations made during the procedure. So everything is linked together. Everything is nicely connected. This is where it gets really cool. Okay, I'm intrigued. Imagine the doctor's looking at your chart. Mm -hmm. And thanks to FHIR, they can instantly see those scan results. Right. Even though the scan was done in like a completely different department. Exactly. That's the beauty of interoperability. Seamless data sharing. It's all about making sure that everyone involved in your care has the most up-to-date information. Which can lead to better decisions. Absolutely better informed decisions and more coordinated care. I'm really loving this FHIR thing. It's pretty amazing technology. All right, so the visit's wrapping up. Okay. Feeling a bit better, hopefully. Hopefully much better. And the doctor sends you home with a prescription. All right. Does FHIR play a role in that, too? Absolutely. Every step of the way. All right. What happens? So in this case, we have the medication request resource. Medication request resource. This is like the digital version of your prescription. Got it. It tells the pharmacy exactly what medication you need, the dosage frequency, any special instructions from the doctor. Wow. And then there's also the medication resource itself. Okay, so that's separate. Yeah, this one provides detailed information about the drug itself. Okay. Potential side effects, interactions with other medications, things like that. So it's like having a digital pharmacist double checking everything. Exactly. It's all about safety and making sure you have all the information you need. Now, even though I'm feeling better and heading home, FHIR's job isn't done right. Right. What about follow-up care? Exactly. That's where the care plan resource comes in. Okay, care plan. This is essentially a personalized roadmap for your recovery. Interesting. 
It might outline recommended treatments, suggest lifestyle changes, schedule follow-up appointments, all sorts of things. So it's really helping to guide you on that path to getting back to 100%. Exactly. It's about making sure you have a plan for continued care. This is all sounding incredibly organized and efficient. FHIR really helps bring a lot of structure and clarity to healthcare data. But what about data integrity? An excellent point. How do we make sure all this information is accurate and reliable? So that's where the provenance resource really shines. Provenance, that sounds important. It is, it's like a digital detective that keeps track of every piece of data. Okay. Who created it? When was it updated? Why was it changed? It's all meticulously documented. Wow. This is crucial for ensuring accountability and maintaining the accuracy and trustworthiness of your medical records. So you can be confident that the information is reliable. Exactly. So for everyone listening, what does all this FHIR stuff really mean for you? That's the big question. I think the takeaway here is that FHIR isn't just some abstract tech concept. Right. It has the potential to really revolutionize how your health data is managed and used. Absolutely. And the more you understand about FHIR, mm -hmm. the more empowered you are as a patient. I completely agree. You can ask better questions, advocate for yourself. You can really take control of your healthcare journey. It's all about moving towards a future where your health information is truly working for you. Exactly. Imagine a world where you can like seamlessly share your medical records with a specialist across the country. Or access all your test results and care summaries with just a few clicks on your phone. That's the power of interoperable health data. And FHIR is making it possible. Wow. It's incredible to think about the possibilities. It's an exciting time for healthcare technology. We've only scratched the surface today. Yeah, there's so much more to explore. But hopefully this deep dive has given everyone a better understanding of how FHIR is shaping the future of healthcare. I hope so. Keep exploring, dear listeners, and who knows, maybe you'll be the ones to come up with the next big breakthrough. I can't wait to see what the future holds. It's an exciting time to be alive, folks. It really is. All right, that's it for this deep dive. Until next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. See ya.